We're now going to use the fundamental theorem of line integrals to give a characterization of when a vector field is conservative. So the theorem is the following. So let f be a vector field in a domain D. This could be in R2 or R3 or actually in any number of dimensions. So then F is conservative if and only if, so this, this symbol is if and only if, Um, the integral over C of f dot dr equals zero for every closed curve C in the domain T. Okay, so f is conservative if and only if it integrates to zero along every closed curve. So here's the proof. So to prove that one thing is true if and only if another thing is true, there are two halves. So first we have to go from left to right. So we need to show that if f is conservative, then the integral over c of f dot dr equals zero for every closed curve. So we need to show, so, so we say suppose f is conservative, then we need to show that the integral over c of f dot dr equals zero for every closed curve c and d. But we already know this. We saw this in the last lecture segment. We used the fundamental theorem of line integrals to observe that the integral of a conservative vector field along a closed curve is zero. So we know this by the fundamental theorem of line integrals. You know, the other half of the proof is we want to go the other way. So I want to say if the integral of f along every closed curve is zero, then f is conservative. So suppose the integral over c of f dot dr equals zero for every closed curve C and D. Then we need to show that F is conservative, which means we need to find a potential. So we need to find a function F on the domain such that the vector field F is the gradient of the function lowercase f. So how are we going to do this? So let's, for simplicity, suppose that the domain D is R2. So the general case is similar. Okay, so how am I going to define a potential? What am I going to do? All I've got is a vector field. The only thing I can do with this vector field is integrate it along curves. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to define f of xy to be the integral over c of f dot dr, where c is a curve from the origin to the point xy. Now, if you're a mathematician and you see a definition like that, you say, wait a minute, which curve C? How do you know this doesn't depend on which curve you choose? So when you make a definition like this, the first thing you have to do is explain why does this not depend on the choice of the curve C? So this doesn't depend on the choice of C.
because if C prime is another curve, from 0, 0 to x, y, then, and I need to go to a new page to show you what happens. So, so here's the origin. Here's our point x, y. Here's our curve c from 0, 0 to x, y. Here's another curve c prime from 0, 0 to x prime. So we want to look at the integral over c of f dot dr. And I want to show that that's equal to the integral over c prime. So I want to show that the difference between the integral over c and the integral over c prime is zero. Now what is this difference? Well, so I'm adding the integral over c and subtracting the integral over c prime. But remember that if you switch direction, you switch um, the sign of the integral. So this is the integral over c minus c prime of f dot dr. So c minus c prime, this is the curve you get by going along c and then going backwards along c prime. Okay, so c minus c prime looks like this. So this curve is c minus c prime. But this is now a closed curve. It starts at zero, goes to x, y, the origin, it goes to x, y, and goes back to the origin. So, and then my assumption, remember that I assumed that the integral of the vector field along every closed curve is zero. Okay, so by assumption, this is zero. So it's because c minus c prime is closed. Right, so that's well defined. Okay, so f of x, y equals integral over c of f dot dr is well defined. But now I need to prove that the gradient of this function is equal to f. So we still need to show that the gradient of f is equal to the vector field f. All right? So let's do this on yet another page. So, so let's show that the vector field f evaluated at the point x, y is the gradient of f evaluated at the point x, y. Let's suppose, just for definiteness, that x and y are positive. The general case is similar. Okay, so here's my point x, y. So let's, so proving the gradient of this equals this has two parts. So the first part is we want to show that um, the partial de derivative of f with respect to x at x, y equals the x component of x. Let's give that a name. So let's write f equals pq. So I need to show that partial f partial x is equal to p. And I need to show that at x, y. And I need to show that partial f partial y at x, y equals q of x, y. Right, so let's just do the first one of these. So I need to show that um, the, well, okay, so let's, here's how we can do this. So, so we're gonna fix y, and we're gonna think about varying x. So how can I write down a nice expression for f of x, y when y is fixed? Well, what we can do is we need, so we need to pick a curve, so we can start by going from the origin vertically to the point 0 comma y, and then we can go horizontally to the point x comma y. So let's call this curve c1 and this curve c2, right? 
So f of xy, by definition, is the integral over c1 of f dot tr plus the integral over c2 of f dot tr. Now, when we're fixing y, this is a constant. if y is fixed. Okay, and then this second term, what's this? Well, this is the integral as t goes from 0 to x. Right, so if I parameterize the curve C2 as um, r of t equals t comma y, where t goes from 0 to x, so then this is, I have to take the um, vector field, which is pq, dot the derivative of r of t, which is just 1 comma 0. So I get p. So this is the integral of p of t comma y dt. Okay, And now I take the partial derivative of this with respect to x. So I then get df dx. So, that, so since y is fixed, this first term is a constant, so its derivative with respect to x is 0. And for the second term, I have to look at the derivative of it with respect to x. So d dx of the integral from 0 to x of p of t y dt. Okay, now remember there's a version of the fundamental theorem of calculus which says that if you're integrating a function, then the um, derivative of that integral with respect to changing the limit of integration is the value of the function at that limit. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is p of x, y. And that's what we wanted, because we were trying to prove this equation here, that df dx is p of x, y, and I just did it. Okay, and then to prove the other equation, it's, it's similar, so I won't do the whole thing. But then you, to prove um, df dy equals q, you fix x and vary y. And for this purpose, it's useful to calculate the function lowercase f using a curve like this. So you first go to the point x comma 0 and then go up to the point x comma y. And so then when you integrate over this part you get a constant when x is fixed. And when you integrate over this part you get something which depends on y and its derivative with respect to y is going to be q. Okay? So that's the that's the proof. So what, what happened here? Okay. So we were we were trying to prove that f is conservative if and only if the integral over every closed curve is zero. Now going this way, assuming that f is conservative, then the fundamental theorem of line integrals it immediately implies that the integral over a closed curve is zero. And then to go the other way, we say suppose that the integral over a closed curve is zero, prove that f is conservative. To do that, I have to define a potential f. I define the potential f by integrating the vector field along any closed curve from the origin to the point x, y. And my assumption that the integral over a closed curve is zero implies that this function lowercase f is well defined. And then I have to prove that it really is a potential for f, so I have to prove that its partial derivatives are the components of f. And so then that calculation is this one. So um, to calculate the partial derivative with respect to x, I calculate lowercase f using this red curve and, and differentiate. And then to calculate partial f partial y, I calculate the potential f using the screen curve and differentiate. So that's, that's the proof.